that in here. What's up, man? What's going on, Brian? How you doing, bro? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How you holding up? Uh, I'm all right. I've been I've been locked up for about <laughs> a month and a half now, I think, or a little over a month. <laughs> How about crazy? you? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. It's, I'm all right. I'm I'm, I'm kind of in like a weird Zen kind of moment. You know, you know what I mean? Just kind of like. You know, you just uh, appear to kind of figuring yourself out and and all that. So it's it's pretty cool. Still a little crazy. I'm still getting a little like you know getting that antsy. Kind of yeah, 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 I'm for sure. But um, but all in all, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, right on. It's a good time to reset for sure. I'm definitely trying to take advantage of the downtime and just kind of reset and relax and be with the family and try and write some tunes. You know, so take advantage while I can. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. So, yeah, I wanted to start doing this. I don't know if I'm going to still give the name yet, but, uh, like last week I had Alex Fry on and we were just kind of just talking music and, you know, whatever we're, we're doing project wise and, and everything. Yeah. And I just, I just had so much fun. I just wanted to just do this with, with other people. And, right on yeah that's so cool yeah and you know it is it was a couple of weeks ago i was just kind of just doing research about you know music and you know it's it's so hard in in our line of work to even just kind of make it make a living and yeah. you know you just kind of get you know, like in your head and you start doing research and every kind of you know specialist they're like yeah you're not in here to to make money and i was like i understand that but i would still like to provide for my family and 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 uh and do the the basics you know and, and live my life so right right for sure and there's a lot of pitchy stuff out there like where you you start researching it and all these different you know programs you know sign up for my program oh, and no, don't no. And don't, don't get me don't get me wrong i mean i've been sucked into a lot of them you know just uh oh yeah sure here's 200 bucks and then it's all surface level information like wait i already knew all of this <laughs> i had to do like a i think i did that six months ago like a email purge of all the subscribers like this right yeah, like yeah how to be a better musician kind of thing and i was like no. right yeah it's all it's you know what i've learned through over the years you know being full-time it's just you know you just have to learn from your mistakes and you just gotta kind of figure it out on your own have some guidance you know through other people that are doing it the same way you are mm -hmm. and kind of you know um you know, watch what other people are doing, but it's also, you're just, the best way is just going full, you know, a hundred percent into it on your own and just, you know, learn from your mistakes because I've made plenty and I definitely don't do them again for sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's avoiding all of the uh, the pitchy stuff, and you and you kind of learn through time where it's uh, you can kind of weed through it or figure it out a lot quicker than before. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh yeah, they're just trying to sell something, you know. Yeah. So. But, yeah. Yeah. It's why I was actually, you know, I feel like what my brother and sister, you know, what we do is actually, you know, obviously a business and I see my brother and sister, they're in different fields, but they're kind of want to be their own person. And you see the pitfall. It's like, you know, it's, a, it's the same thing. So you're trying to tell them like, Hey, you, you want to go in the left lane on this one. And they're like, right, yeah. I got this, but you just kind of let, you know, it's just experience. They just have to kind of do their own thing, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. You can, you know, you can tell, I mean, that's what I've learned a bunch, even when I started to, you know, get a lot busier and people started to reach out to me asking me, you know, hey, how are you playing so much? You know, what what can I do to, you know, get more gigs and stuff like that? And it's just, you know, it just comes down to work ethic and stuff like that, too. But it's also just 
grinding on your own and watching other people and figuring it out. But, you know, cause somebody can tell you, Oh yeah, you just need to email people back and follow up. That's the key to everything is just following up with venues and stuff like that. And most of the time you could tell people that until they're blue in the face and they still won't do that. Nope. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but, and, and, you know, it's like, that's what you need to do. And it's just, it depends on if you have that hustle or not, you know, that's what separates you from, you know, the, one that wants the dream and the one that actually has, you know, is living the dream, you know, and trying to get there and making those steps to make it happen. So, yeah, but that's yeah. all we live in. We learn kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, tell me how you got started doing this. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, we met at CD baby, right? Probably <laughs> was it the, was it the first one, right? Or the second one? I don't know. If it was, I think it was the second one. The second uh, year in Chicago? Yeah. Okay. Was, I mean, yeah. definitely in Chicago. I don't know if it was the first. I think it, it was the, because the, the year afterwards, um, they did it in Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. So then that was the second one. So that was the one, the second year. Uh, so uh, 26. And then uh, one day I walked into my job and I quit because I couldn't like, I was already thinking about going full time. And that's when I, you know, pulled the trigger and went for it just because I learned that, you know, I kept pushing it off for so long because it was always, the, you know, oh, let's pay this bill off or let's wait a little bit longer before I go full time. And, you know, I had you know, CD baby stirred me up enough to where I went in and I quit my job and, uh, and I went for it and, you know, that was 2016. So, you know, I've been hustling and grinding since then. And, you know, I haven't, I haven't looked back since, but, uh, it's been going good. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's a hustle. And if you have that drive and, you know, like you and I both know it's, if, you know, the more gigs you play is essentially giving you more opportunity, you know, to play other places because you're just marketing yourself every time you play, mm -hmm. you know, you're so, but yeah, I mean, since then, I mean, I've done a few tours and stuff like that and released a couple albums. So it's been, uh, it's been crazy and busy. So, uh, you can definitely, uh, you know, tell people, you know, how to do it, you know, they just need to get out there and do it themselves. <laughs> yeah. But cause how many, cause how many gigs are you playing a month or were you playing a month? Um, cause you were um, playing. I kind of do, I, I kind of was like a, uh, I did like a yearly kind of thing. And, um, cause I don't play, I usually don't play December and January. Those are the two months that I, I kind of take off for even like songwriting purposes. And also I just, I kind of hate playing Christmas music. So I kind of just, I'm right, I'm thing. right there. I'm right there with you, man. I avoid Christmas parties. Like if I can like sneak by with some weddings in December and January, mm -hmm. I'm good, but I'm avoiding New Year's Eve parties and Christmas parties all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was just bad experiences for me. And it's just kind of like, you just kind of like look around like, why am I here? <laughs> dude, I, dude, honestly, there is, there's a specific one a couple years ago where I was playing in somebody's living room and they wanted me to play Christmas music for like the first 45 minutes. And I think I got like 10 minutes into playing Christmas music and I was like, I don't, nobody's listening. And I don't think this many people want to hear Christmas music for this long, you it's know, long. like, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was just like, I got offered that same gig this past December and I turned it down. Cause I was like, I'd rather play a so far show and make less money and play for a crowd of people and playing for, playing my original music you know so yeah. it's like i'll take the pay cut to feed my soul yeah. <laughs> you know but yeah i'm right there with you 
But so, and then you, what, because do you do a lot of weddings and stuff like that? I do, um, I do a wedding every once in a while, and um, but I, I mostly do wineries now, wineries and, oh, okay. and kind of house concerts, and um, yeah, that's awesome. I just love it. Um, yeah, I just I, my goal is just I just want to play at just beautiful places, and um, I, I'm just kind of I was kind of tired of playing at um, like my my type of music was never for the bar scene, and. Um, so it was just like I was playing at bars, and it, you know they just were a little too loud, a little too rowdy, uh, rowdy and I was just like, I right. was but the the winery is just it's just kind of perfect for for my scene. So I kind of I try to stick to their to my niche niche as as close as possible. So yeah, that's smart. And wineries tend to have more money, anyways, and more draw, and people that like at least the wineries that I play at, mm-hmm. you know, people tend to actually be there to sit and drink and listen when you're in a bar you know you're either oh you're playing over the hawks game or you know yeah. some kind of sports and you just feel like you're in the way at the winery people are there to you know sit and chill and relax and you know if they set it up right you know they're there for music too you know yeah. so i feel that for sure and it's yeah less rowdy you know for yeah. by a lot <laughs> yeah, by a lot. I remember, I remember it was like three or four years ago, and I was I was playing, but they had me. They booked me, and I wasn't. It was, I guess it was kind of my fault too because I wasn't paying attention. But it was like the same time as the NBA finals, and I was just yeah. like in a bar, just just playing. No one's paying attention. Everyone's looking up at the at the screen, and I'm just like, oh. yeah, right. I if I played a single if I didn't play a single note no one would notice it was just right oh yeah no for I've been there plenty of times those are the those are the gigs that you just hope that they don't cancel because it is the finals yeah. you know I like, like cuz when it gets around like when the Blackhawks were doing really well like I was getting gigs dropped left and right from that stuff you know so it's like yeah. even 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 when the Cubs went to the World Series like that was huge where you know gigs are getting dropped because i played down in wrigleyville during the playoffs and i couldn't even like walk down the street with my gear to get into the club you know to play you know i mean it's just like oh no this is not gonna be a good time like (laughs) people are putting their empty beers in my tip jar you know i mean it's just like why am I even here right now? Like <laughs> nobody can hear me. You know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I de- I definitely feel you on all of that for sure, man. Well, but, what yeah. was, to your knowledge that you can remember, what do you think would be like your most like your worst gig or your like your most out of place gig? Uh, there was uh, one of my first gigs that I ever played. Uh, I would play in between my dad's uh, sets with his band, you know, and there was this big festival in uh, my hometown and it was like this big, like, you know, you know, 30 by 50 stage, just, you know, a huge, you know, sound system. Like I was out of, like, I was nowhere ready for that at all. Mm -hmm. And I was so nervous and, I didn't get to sound check and it was just, you know, shooting it, you know, on the fly and I was messing up the words. I was messing up my chord progressions. <laughs> I mean, it was so bad. Even my dad came up to me and was like, yeah, that didn't go so well. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, Dad. And he's like, yeah, maybe it was too big of a stage to start. I'm like, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh, we we broke it back down to a duo, and it took me maybe like a few more years before I got back on a bigger stage. But I, I got back there at least, you know. <laughs> when you got back to the bigger stage, did you have the, the flashbacks of your first time, or was you like, did you have enough gigs on your belt? You're like, I'm good now. Yeah, no. By then, I had played out enough, and I was a little more rehearsed too. You know, I was so, you know, because it's even practice playing 
you know, for me, even now, like I can practice a song at home all day long and have it down. But when you put me into a situation where, you know, I'm playing House of Blues or Metro, that's a completely different ball game. And everything that you had practiced could go out the window if you can't hear yourself on stage. I mean, that's my biggest thing. If the sound sucks, then the whole night is shot and I'm Mm -hmm. like on edge and I can't, you know, I can't put my, you know, focus a hundred percent on the song. You know, I'm trying to just hear myself kind of thing. And I've been in those situations, but what I've learned over time is the more you rehearse, then when you can't hear yourself, you're so practiced that you know that you're singing it right, even though you can't hear yourself. (laughs) Because you have to prepare yourself for some, you know, some guy that doesn't know what he's doing on the soundboard, you know, and, uh, and I've learned, I learned that really quick. And then, yeah, it's just practicing. And then I, I built more confidence over the years and, my the band that I was with really, you know, strived to have everything down really tight. So that made things a lot easier when we got to the stage and we could be, you know, loose and, you know, not so high strung because we don't know how the song is gonna, you know, finish, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. Do you have um I know this happened to me at a, at a couple of wineries, but the simple, like practicing and just doing like the repetition so much that you almost kind of get bored a little bit. Like you just like, you know, for those people, it's like your first, their first time listening to your song or whatever, but like, you're also just like, oh, <laughs> like again with, with this and like, I don't know. I always had this one, like, I always had this fear, like, there's one person who's, like, following everything I do and just, like, dude, I've heard this, like, a thousand times. Like, what do you play something different? Yeah, (laughs) right. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, Especially before, uh, before the lockdown, I was getting to my sets and it was just, you know, I can maybe learn one or two songs a month if I'm really pushing but with my schedule it's so hard to like just sit down and you know really because when I try and learn a song I really try and learn it the way they played it because you always get those Dave Matthews people you know where they're like oh yeah but it's like one of these chords man (laughs) you know that's like all right bro like I watched him play this live you know so it's uh (laughs) Um, so it's hard to learn a bunch of tunes, but yeah, I was definitely getting to the point where, you know, if I even thought of Eric Clapton, I'd be like, uh, I don't want to play, you know, Crossroads or Lay Down Sally again, you know? And, and like you said, it's new to everyone else, but you know, your few fans that you have come out, you know, might still dig it, but you know, you have to like, whenever somebody comes out that is a fan of mine or friend that always comes out, I always try and throw all the new stuff on top just to give them something new and fresh, you know? Yeah. (laughs) But I definitely feel you, man. It was getting to the point where, but that's where I throw my originals in. Like if I'm bored, like I always love playing my originals. Like I don't have a problem, you know, just cause you don't get to play them that often you know, like in the, you know, I'm doing like 30 to 35 sets a month. So it's like, I might get two or three original shows in a month, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, I'll still throw them in during, you know, my restaurant residency gigs, you know, when nobody's Mm -hmm. really paying attention, you know, yeah, and that kind of keeps, keeps my soul fed while I do that stuff, you know? Yeah. But that's awesome. I, f- I feel you on that for sure. Definitely yeah. get bored bored playing other people's stuff. <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah, all right, I can't I can't do this again. I can't do this. What song what song is it for you? Like what song are you like, no, nah, I'm just skipping over that. Like, but it's a well, like it's a popular tune. You know, that like Mary Jane's last dance for me would be like everyone always goes for that one and I'm so like 
You need to put a 20 in the tip jar if you want me to play <laughs> <Or> that song. <laughs> yeah. Mine right now is probably Happy. Okay, yeah, I can see that, yeah. But it's a good tune, though. It's a great tune. I mean, I'm, I'm not denying that it's not a great tune. Right, though, yeah. But it's just kind of like, all right, this is the 8,000th time I play this. <laughs> right. It was funny because when I listened to it, when I first heard it, like, I loved it. I listened to it a billion times. But just playing it and listening to it is two completely different animals. So. Right, yeah, for sure. But, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another question for you. Um, four twenty. You don't. You don't smoke. Do you smoke at all? Yeah, I do. Yeah, for sure. Did you celebrate four twenty. Yeah, I mean every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It was just another day for me. <laughs> I don't. I don't smoke, but um, it, it's funny. I, I was like yesterday i was like should i post it's like it's gonna get drowned out with all of this 420 uh, stuff but, but, oh yeah for sure yeah yeah for sure and um i was thinking i played a, a gig in san francisco like <laughs> a few years ago on 420 and you know for it just did not pop in my head for 420 and um i go there and it's just san francisco is just I, it was hayden ashbury and it was just like just clouds everywhere. Just nothing. All oh, right. Me. Yes. <laughs> my wife brought, like my wife came. She brought the dog, so they were outside, and I was playing at a show. Um, I think it was at Brainwash Cafe, and it was it was just like everybody was just completely gone. Like, oh, right. Yeah. Just just like a one big Snoop Dogg concert. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I used to, you know, we used to do that back when we were kids, like where we would all hang out and, you know, party and stuff like that. But now it's just more chill. And I just, for me, it's just like having a beer kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm just to relax and wind down kind of thing and then go to bed kind of thing. So, yeah. but yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, do you have any new projects coming up now? Uh, I mean, uh, the one uh, positive thing that's coming out of this lockdown is, uh, you know, I'm writing more. I got a couple new tunes that I'm trying to wrap up and, you know, actually try and, you know, record and then get those out. And, you know, I have a couple co-write projects that I'm working with people. Uh, my buddy, Matt Burke, um, we write tunes together all, t all the time. And then... Uh, I'm releasing like acoustic songs, like uh, old old tunes that I recorded in 15 and I'm just doing acoustic versions of them that I did with my upright bass player. And uh, just releasing one a month. I didn't release anything last year. So I was like, all right, I mean, you know, my fan base is super small. So even if I released it again, you know, and I released it two years ago, it's still going to be new to everybody. You know, it's yeah. not going to be like, wait, I've heard this one before because my fan base is like 20. So, <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, I'll just keep cycling the same stuff, you know, throw new stuff in there. And, you know, uh, you know, obviously I wrote a pandemic song, you know, you see those funny memes of, you know, every musician and their pandemic song, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so uh but i mean it, you know it was uh you know my dad always taught me to you know when you're going through tough times or you know when there's a lot of emotions you know all over the place it's always a good time to write like when you lose somebody or you know going through this right now where everybody's affected and everybody's going through the same thing mm -hmm. you know it only makes sense to write about it because you know that everybody in some way or another is going to be able to connect with you because everyone in the world is going through this right now like yeah. everyone is affected you know it's mm -hmm. crazy to think that you know and it sucks you know and but you know it's a good time you know like my dad would say is it's a good time to write you know and I wrote a, I wrote one tune from it and then, yeah, just finishing up other tunes and uh, hopefully, you know, get back out on the road 
in the fall, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? I don't. It, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, keep hustling when you don't know when we're gonna go back to work. You know, yeah. it's like. And then how can you sit here and try and book, you know, dates, you know, further out when you know, and reach out to these. Re- yeah, reach out to these wineries or restaurants and be like, hey, I'm just seeing if you're booked in July. And it's like, how can you ask somebody that you clearly aren't open either and they could be struggling and you don't know their situation and, you know, you don't want to bug anybody and, you know, make them feel overwhelmed. Like, dude, I don't want to have time to book music right now. I'm trying to keep my business open, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's hard, uh, you know, cause I want, I was supposed to be leaving for tour today. I was supposed to be leaving for, uh, Boston and I was going to do a run from Boston all the way down to DC and then back home. But obviously that's no one wants to be near New York right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, but, you know, it's for the best. But, you, you know, I was reflecting last week where it's like, dude, all that time that you put in to setting up these tours. You know, I started booking this in December and I finalized everything in like the very beginning of March and I had everything locked in. Everything was tight. I had like 10 original shows like one after another and i was like this is gonna be great and then everything hit the fan it was like all that work is just gone you know and i just tell my wife i was like all right i've i've done it three times i'll just have to do it again you know so it's just it's hard (laughs) it's hard when you have to do it over again you know yeah, but, but, you know, each time it just kind of gets easier and easier because, you know, you're just getting better. You just get that reps in. It's just, um, I, I totally, I, my, my EP came out on the 21st and I booked out, I booked uh, a, a winery and um, I had all I these, saw that. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Yeah. yeah. It ended up getting, uh, getting canceled. And for some reason, like, I thought I would be more bummed about it, but I was just kind of like, uh, it's gonna be all right because a lot of people you know a lot of people who were gonna come they were like totally supportive and, and everything so it's like I, as long as you get the support and people who you know you know if, if people are still messing with you then then it doesn't hurt as much you know <laughs> right yeah for sure yeah i definitely see that for sure yeah so it's just uh yeah you just got to keep hustling and figure it out and kind of roll with the punches and hopefully it clears up during the bit you know busy season for us which is summertime and you know hopefully uh the wheel gets turning again and you know we can get back to work as soon as possible you know and hopefully uh get back at it and make some money yeah (laughs) have you have you applied have you been applying for the grants and stuff like that or uh I haven't really thought about doing that. I don't know why. It was just, I don't know. It, it just felt like I, I'm okay right now. And like, you know, I'm talking to, to people and, you know, I'm still doing, um, right now I'm just talking to like my you know, fans and people who watched me before and like my email list. And I'm doing um, like um, just at home kind of concerts right now for yeah. for people, which is which is fine for me um obviously not enough to to uh <laughs> to do for a living i wish like maybe if i had like five more a week it would be perfect and, right and uh but but uh for now i'm i i'm i'm good i think I'm good right on, right on. cool how about yourself uh i've applied for the grammy grant um you know just because on my end you know it is a big hit for us because mm-hmm. you know i have four kids and you know, the wife in the house. So I definitely applied for the Grammy grant. I did get that. And then I also did the unemployment um, just because, you know, being out of work for this long is definitely, you know, because I am like, this is all I do. So yeah. I I haven't done anything since other than release music and try and push people to my website, you know, to purchase stuff. But it's hard to, 
you know, ask for money when, you know, when nobody, Boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's, and, you know, people, that, and people have, you know, don't get me wrong, like, there's a couple venues that I play that still paid me for, uh, even if, you know, I, the gig was canceled, they still paid me the, you know, the same amount that they would have paid me for playing, you know, so I'll probably do like a freebie for them for over the summer, just, you know, thanking them for, you know, cause they've one place has already paid me twice, you know, and once in March and once in April. So that's been pretty cool of them to do that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's cool to see that. And, you know, like this time, you know, the times that we're in right now really kind of, uh, you know, it shows people's character, you know, good and bad. You know, yeah. so it's kind of, it, it's, I always tend to gravitate towards the positive and, you know, see the good in it. And it's good to see when people, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Like I was really shocked and I thank the person for doing that, you know, and they appreciate me. So it felt more like, you know, there's more, more than just showing up to somebody's restaurant and playing and then getting out of there. It's more of, you know, you start getting, you know, gaining these connections with people to that level where they want to support you and they don't want to say you struggle. And it's, it's good to see that in times like this. And I do the same, you know, I'm going around tipping my friends while they're playing and stuff like that, you know, yeah. and, and we're doing it, you know, we're all flipping twenties back and forth to yeah. each other, but it, you know, but it, it's still the love, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. Like if they needed that extra cash that week, you know, then, you know, you don't know people's situations. So, you know, you just try to, you know, do what you can and, you know, obviously, uh, support each other and and you know like i say to people all the time it's it can go you know it doesn't even have to be money just a simple share or streaming or you know buy a cd buy a t-shirt that that goes a long way too you know yeah. so but yeah it's good to see people come around and uh, be supportive and support arts and you know especially you know even just, you know, the healthcare workers and stuff like that, you know, that's the, that's the key to all of this right now. So that's, those are the people that need our support right now because they're yeah. the ones busting their butts to, you know, keep us safe and healthy. And that goes a long way. Yeah. That's totally true. That's totally true. Yeah. Um, what I would, that's what I wanted to ask you. Um, you mentioned your kids um what is it like how is it touring out you know with your kids at home like what is i guess i'm assuming there's probably some great difficulty like you miss your kids and, and oh friends. yeah but like yeah how you, it's kind of like i guess i want to ask like you're balancing your your family life you as a father versus you brian allison as the um as the musician yeah it's uh it, it can be hard and stressful on, you know, me and my wife, you know, obviously, but we have a good su support system here. Like her mom and my mom, you know, both watch the kids if I need to, you know, get to another gig or go on tour. And so they really believe in what I'm trying to do because, you know, yeah, you can sit at home and try and play original music all day long, but getting out on the road you know, builds it up into more than what it actually, you know, can be, you know, so when I go on tour to the East Coast, that looks like, you know, wow, Brian's getting out there. And when, and when I do, I do build those connections with so far. And, you know, because those that's right now the what I'm really, you know, gunning for just because it draws people and, you know, I don't have to draw anybody and I get to show up. And, you know, and my wife is super supportive. I mean, we've been together going on, you know, 15 years. So she's Definitely. been there. Yeah. So she's been through the whole, you know, everything. So it's, you know, she, you know, knows that this is what I need to do to make things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, uh, you know, like the tour when I came out by you, and, uh, you know, I was in San Francisco, that was like a 21 day tour. And that, that was way long to be away from, from the kids. I think from New Mexico, 
I think from when we got done, I had a buddy meet up with me in Colorado. And when we got done in New Mexico, I think we went from New Mexico all the way back to Chicago and did like 24 hours straight just because we were like, let's get home. Yeah. This was too long. Mm -hmm. So for me, I can probably... I could probably stretch to like a week to a week and a half now, like, cause I can get to the East coast pretty quick, you know? And like, I was just going to do short runs this year where I was just going to go to Atlanta for a couple of days, go to Seattle for a couple of days, mm -hmm. you know, go to Colorado for a couple of days and just do like short spurts, you know, and not, and not make it so long. You know, if I, you know, I have been trying to pitch to artists to open up for them and like kind of hop on their tour and follow them through the Midwest, yeah. you know, and I would, I would stretch a little bit longer for that just because, you know, I'm getting in front of their crowd and I'm getting that credibility and exposure and whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So, but yeah, I mean, at this point it's about a week, you know, to where I can be on the road and, get back home and that's to the point where I just run in the door and I start hugging everybody because it's been too long you know yeah <laughs> and then give me a week and I want to get back out on the road <laughs> cool I was home let's get back at it <laughs> so but but it's fun because you meet so many people like and you know when I went the last time uh, just this last fall to the East Coast, I reconnected with people that I met the last time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just those connections, you know, as long as, you know, you're genuine and you keep those connections, they can, you know, a place to stay, you know, yeah. or a connection of a place to play, you know, and that's where, that's why I'm able to, you know, there's even a restaurant in Rhode Island that they saw me play in Chicago and I hit them up and they were like, yeah, if you're ever on the East coast, let us know. And I hit them up and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to be on the East coast. And I played there, you know, it was like a cash gig for me, you know? Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's what you do with your connections and, you know, and it can evolve, you know, like me and my buddy BC, did you meet BC at CDBB? Mm. he's from nigeria oh yes um from san francisco you like yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I him. yeah so this was our second time on the east coast and there was a couple of talks that we had where it was like this is definitely easier the you know third fourth time around now to where we know what we need to do like the first time you're like Spram like, wait, where do we gotta go? Okay, let's get up early. So we get there early. And now we're just like, okay, if we leave now, we'll get there with enough like 10 minutes to spare. So let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, and we're staying in hotels, like because mm -hmm. we were staying in like I slept on a studio floor in Brooklyn. You know, I've slept on a couch in a garage, you know, mm -hmm. I mean it's just like no, I'm, I'm going to be a little more, you know, high class on this tour and at least buy some cheap hotel rooms. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you, you know, you learn and uh, and then it makes it easier on the wife, you know, because then now I know that, OK, I can accomplish everything in eight days. I can play, you know, six to seven shows if I really cram everything in there you know if you just pack it in and just really you know try and line everything up to where you know it just lines up and you just knock it out and get back home you know yeah. there's too much space that's what was wrong with the uh the west coast there was a lot of like three days in between the gigs and you know it took like a week and a half to get all the way to the West coast, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's a live and you learn. I did it. I won't do it again. I'll fly. I'll just fly there. <laughs> <laughs> that or a really nice luxury van. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, like the, that. That would be like the only two options. Yeah, I told myself I really, I don't think I'm gonna tour like on that level. I, I, I kind of. Everyone's been telling me I should do a uh, like a year, like an international tour at least once in my life. So. Oh um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I might just kind of put that on my bucket list. But as far as uh, as as for touring goes, I'm still kind of like, I kind of like home. <laughs> yeah, right, for sure. Well, and you're out of your comfort zone. Like when you're getting into New York and DC and Baltimore, like mm-hmm. you know, even That's just park. Yeah, even parking is sketch. Like, am I in a good neighborhood or am I in a bad neighborhood? Like when we would pull into the cities, we would do our set in the city. And then we would, we would be like a half an hour, 45 minutes out in the burbs just because we didn't want to be, you know, staying in the city because we didn't know if we were in a dicey area or what, you know, because yeah. we didn't want our gear getting busted, you know, into. And, and there was a couple of nights where I would sleep in the van, you know, and it's like, you just, that's what you do. You know, I mean, that's, that's the passion, I guess. Like, yeah. I mean, when you tell people, you know, like, oh, wow, you're touring and everything, and are you staying in hotels? I'm like, no, I'm sleeping in my van, and they're like, oh, okay, so you're really touring. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) This this ain't no vacation. I'm trying to make money or just break even. (laughs) So, but... It sounded, it sounds so glad, like, I remember just that thought of touring and, and winning a Grammy, you know, as a kid, those are the, the, the two kind yeah. of like, look at it. You're like, Jesus, no one told me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. When me and BC are pulling into Boston after, you know, 12, 13 hours of driving yeah. and it's just like, wait, why are we doing this right now? <laughs> Like, wait, why did we sign up for this? Yeah, I mean, we were cracking jokes the whole time. But, you know, it's that passion. And, you you know, the people, like I said, it, it, it always comes, you know, it's just one of those things, like, you can think about all the negative stuff, but when somebody connects with your music on that tour, even if it's just one person that just absolutely loves it, like, that that just takes away all that stuff, you know, sleeping in the van makes it worth it, you know, or if somebody bought your shirt or somebody messages you, you know, a month later, like, Hey, still listening to your music. Can't wait for you to come back. Like, all right, this is why I do this, you know? Yeah. And even if it's just one person, like, cause at this point, you know, on my level, it's like, that every person counts, you know, like you're, you're just everyone just like you try to engage everyone at this point before it gets overwhelming. And you can't, if I ever get there, if I ever get to that point, <laughs> no, you'll, you'll definitely get to that point. To that point. If I, we get, if we, if we ever get out of this lockdown, get out of, yeah. <laughs> I, I never knew it's like one of those things. It's like, you know when like your teacher tells you something and you're just like yeah yeah it's basic information but like you have to experience it to finally be like oh that's what you're actually talking about but i was having kind of like that that um revelation with with like the you know musicians mailing list you know like of how yeah. important the like the the value of, of how important that that list is and you know how important it is to try to grow that in any way that you can and yeah. You just have to take care, of, like try to take care of technology as much as possible. Like add technology as much as possible to that to make that happen. Oh, it's it's that's like uh, that alone can be a full time job. You yeah, know? I mean it's just it's that can be more taxing and take away from the creative, you know, side of things more than you know, anything really, you know, so it's like when you're trying to be creative, but, oh, I need to get this post out. I need to, you know, send these shirts out and then I need to, you know, promote this show and try and book gigs, you know, everything like it's like, oh, I can only put 10% effort into my originals, you know, and then I need to try and, you know, book cover gigs, you know, so everything starts to get spread out and you and if you manage it well enough and if you can get the wheels turning on one thing, 
so you can focus more over here. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like you got to build a well-oiled machine, you know, and you start, and then, but you get, you start getting there, you know, like I'm three, four years into it now. And this was the year that I was going to back off on my cover gigs and push into originals and go figure, you know, I, well, now I gotta like, as soon as I get back into this, I need to play as many shows as possible. Yeah. You know, just cause it's like, you know, there's always going to be that wrench, you know, in the spokes that you gotta, you know, figure it out. And, you know, it's just, you know, I mean that like, cause me and my buddy were just talking, like we're always coming up short. Like we're always just, Oh yeah, we're getting good momentum, and then it's just like, no, nope, okay. something gets something. There's always something that like just gets in the way. Like uh, my new song, "Burning Bridges," I get this playlist, and it was like I finally got a good playlist that like I got like five thousand streams in like two weeks. And I was like, cool. Let's keep this going. Finally, I get something, you know, like, let's keep it going. And like today I looked at my numbers and it was like 500 streams a day. Mm-hmm. And then I looked today and it went down to 62 and I'm like, damn it, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, like that was the, like, that was the only entertaining thing that I had going on right now. Like where I was like, oh, cool. How many streams is that today? And then when I saw it, like my heart just sank. It was like, damn, I'm off the playlist. I know it. And I checked it and I'm like, and then I emailed the guy right away, like, hey man, is there any way I can resubmit? (laughs) (laughs) So I mean, it's just like, but it's just one of those things, like you're starting to go and it's like, ah, just give me to like 10,000. Like none of my, I don't have any songs at 10,000. It might make me look a little bit better, you know, because, <laughs> you know, like it's a numbers game, you know, people I hear, I hear that stuff all the time. Like, oh yeah, we love to have you, but you don't really have a lot of monthly listeners on Spotify. And it's like, if you just let me sing and play my songs, mm-hmm. it, you'll change your mind. Like, yeah. don't let it be a numbers game. Let my music do, you know, the talking. But you know how it is. It's they want fan base and they want numbers and they want, you know, engagement and all that stuff. So you yeah, just weird, vicious cycle. You know? Yeah, for sure. And you just roll with it, you know, because I get people like, sweet, you just pay for ads just to boost your views and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, because when I do the same thing, when I see somebody that has 10,000 views on their YouTube video, I look at them a little bit harder, you know, like, oh, what are they doing to get that many views, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you have to do that to separate yourself from, you know, the guy that only has you know you know where i used to be like seven listeners a month you know and it's just you know trying to weed out all the scammers because you know you i'm sure you get it where it's like hey come to us and you'll get you know fifty thousand followers and ten thousand likes in a day you know just pay us pay us fifty dollars you know and then it never happened yeah yeah you know? I totally, I just got one for like YouTube. Yeah, I get one. <laughs> oh, sorry, wife's calling. Uh, yeah, I just got one for uh, YouTube. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, increase your playlist. I was like, I'm not. No, yeah. no, no, no. No, not at all. Like, because you still have to, you know, build it organically and. You know, even though I got that playlist that, you know, boosted my numbers and stuff like that, you know, still trying to see if people were saving it, you know, like if it was actually building organically or just, you know, on repeat and it was just giving me the listens. I wanted to see that I was actually, you know, people were actually gravitating towards the song, you know, and actually listening to it, you know, opposed to just you know, it's on a playlist and people are passing it by, you know, so, but, you know, you just, you keep doing it and you just hope for, you know, and when it comes down to it, it's, it comes down to, uh, who, you know, 
and just being at the right place at the right time too. That's the yeah. majority of you hear these people's stories, you know, Ed Sheeran, you know, playing in the malls or, and playing as many shows as we are a year, you know, playing 300 plus shows a year. And, you know, it's like, all right, he was grinding. He was really, you know, he wasn't just sitting at home and accidentally got discovered. Yeah. You know, you know he was hustling, you know, like there was even, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy was talking about when he would be doing, you know, comedy slots in Brooklyn and stuff like that. And he was saying that he would do five sets a night. You know, he would, I would, I would do an early set in this place, go across town, do the late set there and then go back and do the early set at this other club and then go back out. You know I mean? It's just like, all right, that's what I have to do. Like, I just have to play as much as possible because that's the best advertisement that you could do for yourself. You know, you're selling yourself every time, you know, you play, you know, and if that's one way that you can engage people and I find that I engage people the best is when they see me live, you yeah. know, cause it's hard to, you know, anybody can sound good nowadays on recordings and stuff like that. It's the live performance that even when I go and see performers, like there's this band Joseph that I absolutely love. And I listened to him before we went and saw him live and I was like, yeah, they're all right. But when we went and saw him live, it was like, oh, shit, this is That's really good. Like, yeah. And I'm looking around like, why isn't anybody getting into this right now? Yeah. This is amazing. And like now we're like huge fans. And it's just like, you know, I'm like, OK, it, it is all about the live performance when it comes down to it and how you sell people emotionally, too. You know, because I tend to connect people more on emotional, you know, I write a lot of songs about hope and, you know, strength and all that kind of stuff, just Mm because, you know, the stuff that I've been through in my life to, you know, you know, that brings that out, you know, so. That's awesome. Yeah, right on. That's awesome. So last, I guess the last time I did this last week, I, Alex actually came up with a good idea and I, I, I'm, I'm slowly, it's growing on me and I think I want to get more people onto it. We want to do like the first song challenge and like everyone mm-hmm. gets together and just records the very first song that they, they've ever written and uh-huh. just, just kind of perform it. And I was just thinking of like my very first song. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh man, I can't even think uh i mean i just went through uh i just learned a bunch of old tunes that i had uh written way back in the day and i did like a brian's oldies night so there was a couple old tunes that yeah that i had uh worked back up and i had to remember the progressions and even like try and really think really hard on what the lyrics were because it's been so long you know yeah and and just stupid easy songs where it's just a two chord progression the whole way through i mean pretty much i mean every pop song out there today but (laughs) you know back then it was just like d minor g the whole time what was i doing (laughs) so but do you have a do you have a song that is like I feel like every artist has like that song that they consider like their underrated song like after you wrote it you're like this is my hit this is my Mona Lisa this is my thing and then like it didn't necessarily pan out the way you did oh um or the opposite like you had a song that you were just like oh right, yeah for song and like everyone just like just lost their mind over yeah, I've had more of that for sure. Like uh, my song "Color in My Soul" that I released back I in the February. Video. I like that song, by the way. Yeah, so that yeah, that one like I brought that one I recorded in fifteen, and I redid it with my bass player because the upright bass sounded really good on it. And that one always like you know it's slow and it's sad and you know kind of somber. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of boring, you know, and I never really played it out, but everyone would always be like, yeah, play that, uh, you know, color blue song that you play. 
And I was like, oh, all right, you know, or blue is the color of my soul, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just like, yeah, I guess. And so when I went into the studio, I was like, yeah, I should probably redo this one just because everyone, you know, always asked for this one. So yeah. I was always surprised by that one. And uh, I mean, other than that, yeah, I mean, there's been a, uh, I mean, there's, I mean, every song is always like, man, this song is really good. And then it's just like, oh, I guess it didn't, I didn't take off as well as I thought it would, you know, because my sister wrote a really good song that we collaborated on and it just never, it just never took off. And I'm like, this is really good writing from her, you know, and it just never, and never got any gas, you know, from it, you know, so you just kind of let it lie. So, but yeah, yeah, I think everybody has okay. those tunes. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think so too. I, I was just curious if you had one uh, specifically that like, co- like in your back pocket that's just like, man, like this is my, this is the thing that like even like, I guess like your most so- like the song that you're most like emotional about. You know, you like you had to go to like a deep place to kind of bring out, you know? Yeah, I mean, Carry You is a song that I wrote after my dad passed away. And that one, that one hits, you know, I mean, it's pretty like, it's pretty, you know, it's not generic at all. I mean, it's speaking to that, you know, losing somebody, you know, it's saying that throughout the whole song. And that was like, just, that was my emotional song that I wrote, you know, but people, you know, still connect because they can relate with that one, you know, but it just, that one did fall to the wayside just because it's more, it it was never personalized at all. It was always, you know, generic where people can relate to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it still kind of went to the wayside just because, uh, you know, you can only bring that stuff up so much before you start getting burned out, you know, where it's yeah. like, you know, where you lose the emotion in it a little bit too, you know, and then you bring it back up and then you bring up all those old sad memories. Oh, great. This is great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I also like to sing my songs, even if they are sad to encourage people to be like, you know, it's okay to be sad and it's okay to, you know, reflect on stuff. And, you know, I always tell my kids that, you know, but, you know, yeah. It's, it's really hard, like, to go to that deep place. You know, I, I was always curious, like, you know, with Eric Clapton playing, um, you know, tear, like, in, uh, yeah, Tears in Heaven. Heaven. It's like, how many yeah. can you, like, you went on tour you can play that song like i, I know a, a wreck like how many times i would have I know. To be like hey, we need to switch up the playlist and, and do something different but right yeah for sure because i knew even with uh carry you it was like probably for a year every time i would play that song i would get a little like you know, like that ball in your throat, you know, like, don't lose it, man. Don't lose it. (laughs) Yeah. So I couldn't even imagine Eric, you know, having to sing that tune, you know, for his son, you know, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's super heavy stuff. That's even heavier than, you know, losing a parent, you know, like a kid. I can, I would never wish that on anyone. Anyway. yeah. Well, yeah. The it's telling me that I have a minute and twenty seconds left before it is shut down. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm hoping I want to get I want to get you to play a song. I don't know if I should restart it and like have you play a song and then I'll just kind of put it up, or if you want to play something real quick, or because you got a minute now. But, a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> let me let me uh. I'll, We'll do another live real quick, and then I'll have you play maybe one or two songs if you want to. And then, uh, All right, cool. All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye. Yep. Okay. <laughs> to start the whole thing <laughs> all, all over. Yeah, right now. <laughs> you yeah, that stinks. Uh, are, are you, Go have ahead. you watched any of the music, um, like the music verses at all with, like, different musicians kind of going back and forth, like kind of playing their hits. 
No, no, no. Uh, yeah, there's like a bunch of them going going on now. It's just like these, you know, big name uh, musicians kind of going on IG Live and just kind of like just just playing their their hit songs, and it's uh, it's it's a. Uh, I think I've only seen. Uh, who was it? Oh, I was watching Keith Urban like when they first were going live. Mm-hmm. Like when everybody started going live, Keith Urban went live, and. Uh, the, yeah. And I mean, I'm not a big Keith Urban fan, but he was just on, and uh, yeah. But I know Lady Gaga was on what, like the other day, wasn't she? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's cool. My buddy was making the point. My buddy was making the point. Now everybody is, you know, the playing field is leveled. You know, yeah. like everybody, you don't have the same audience. I mean, yeah, you might have people, you know, 10,000, you know, 50,000 people showing up to live stream, but it's not the engagement that those people are used to. They're used to 50,000 people screaming back at them, and now they're yeah. just sitting at just home on the sounds. couch. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I mean, but I mean, it's exactly that. I mean, it's just like, yeah, now, because there was some bands, my buddy was saying, there was a band complaining, you know, like, you know, they had a couple hits, you know, and they were complaining that nobody was engaging them on Facebook. And it was like, yeah, now you know what it's like not to get the engagement, man. Yeah. You know, you, you take that stuff for granted. And we like, we eat that every little, you know, like up and every comment, you know, just because they're like, oh, wow, they're engaging me. And this person yeah. like, oh, there's only 20,000 people. What the heck's going on? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> well, well, love me. It's like, oh, get over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Right, exactly. Do you but, think, um, last question, do you think the the music world has changed because of this? Do you think, like, uh, you know, so I think that there's going to be a slingshot effect, obviously, when everything goes back, like, everybody's going to bars, everybody's going to clubs, so it's going to be packed, it's going to be crazy. But then is it going to, like, will it level out to where it used to be, or do you think more people are going to enjoy music at home? and or right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's hard to think about, you know, long term or how it's going to affect things long term or short term, you know, so it's, you don't, I mean, you don't know. Yeah. So you kind of just treat it like it's going to be the same as it was. Like, I just keep thinking that, like, all right, I'm going to go back to Hampton Social and I'll just play in the background and, you know, but I would hope that you know, this kind of teaches people to be grateful for things like that, to be just grateful to go to a restaurant, you know, yeah. and just, you know, when there is live music, maybe they'll appreciate that a little bit more because, you know, they haven't, when you lose something, you don't know what you have until it's gone, you know, it's like that, you know, example. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to say, you know, you'd hope that, you know, people kind of ease back into it and just don't rush into it and, you know, you know, treat it with respect. Cause there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, let's just get right back at it. And, you know, for me and for me and my son, you know, we, we take it real serious cause you know, we both have compromised immune systems. We both go for treatments to, I lower my immune system and he goes for treatments to boost up his immune system. So we don't know, you know, how our bodies will react to this. So we take it serious and some people just don't care and, you know, like, oh, I'll live forever. But, you know, those are the people that until it happens to them, they'll always think that. And when it does happen to them, they'll, you know, you'll get the old shit face, like, oh, wait, this is serious. Maybe I shouldn't have said all this stuff, or maybe I shouldn't have went right back out, you know. So We're talking to you, Georgia, and Florida. And all <laughs> these places want to stay yeah. open. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, because it's like, yeah, it might not affect you, but if you're spreading it to me or my son, it could affect us completely different. So it's you know, one of those moments where it's like, don't be selfish, you know, think of your neighbor and think of the, you know, 
you know, the people that can be affected by it. You know, you, it might not affect you, but you could be hurting somebody else's family, you yeah. know, and it's, so it's just, you know, that's why I said earlier, it's, 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 uh, it's showing people's true character, you know, yeah. good and bad. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's what this, you know, all things like this, when you go into, you know, something like this, you'll see how people really are. And uh, some of it sucks and some of it's really great. There's really positive things that can come out of this. You know, it's, I can be home with my family, you know, and have that time with them when I'm normally, you know, ships passing with my wife, you know, I get, or she'll get home and I go out and gig and I never see the kids all day, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's nice to be home, but then it's also, you can only handle four kids for a month and a half for so long <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the point where you want to run outside and run away from everything. So, I mean, it's a catch-22, but, you know, you just try to take everything like a grain of salt and keep rolling with the punches. <clears throat> All right, cool. All right, well, um, let's have you play a song uh, here before we yeah. close this out. Uh, what song do you want to play today? Uh I'll play uh, my Pandemic song. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I, I, I really like it. It's, uh, you know, it was a song that I wrote right when this all kind of you know, when everything started happening and everything started falling into the, you know, lockdown and everything. And, you know, we didn't know what the virus was and how it would affect us and what the future was going to hold as far as, you know, this was before, uh, you know, I was, well, this was right when I all my gigs got canceled, so I was kind of like, all right, I don't know what to do. And my be my wife was worried, you know, so because she, you know, she hasn't let me out of the house because she won't, you know, she doesn't want me to get sick because she worries about me, you know, which, you know, she's a, a saint for all of that because she still has to put up with me for a month and a half because she's working from home. Mm -hmm. but uh so there was a lot of emotions and uh so uh i wrote this song it's called keep your head up high all right all right alex and everybody <laughs> i just call the city that it'll be okay Truth somehow always finds its way Who knows what tomorrow may bring The world will keep on turning Let us not forget We just a stand of sin Coming up short on this old dream Just keep your head up high The face of looking back, keep your head up high Here we all trying to stand together that can change just like the weather Shows you who we really are Always push it too far Silence in the sky tonight Sit around something Just keep it Things are looking now, keep your head up high Things are looking now, keep your head up high
That's my pandemic song, man. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Man. Thank you so much for sharing that song. Yeah, you bet, man. And thanks for uh, chatting with me. It's just good to talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's getting a little crazy around here. So we're trying to, you know, spread the, spread the love, spread the word and everything. So, um, man, for sure. Why don't you tell the people where to find your stuff and um, how they can get in contact with you? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you guys can just uh, uh, go to brianallisonmusic.com or uh, you can follow me on any social like platform under Brian Allison Music. Um, and I'm on Spotify. I'm on all streaming platforms. I have music uh, everywhere that you can think. And, uh, you know, any... Uh, any engagement or support that you guys can give goes a long way. So I appreciate everything. So, All right. So go out and support Brian Allison Music. And, um, Thanks, man. Thank you guys so much for uh, taking, the, taking the time and checking out our conversations. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care, man. All right. Later, bro.